All right, hello there, thrill seekers. That was a little snippet of a song called Naked Truth, which is the final song on the second Dementia 13 album. Dementia 13 was my psychedelic band in the 80s. Uh, that was Mirror Mind with a groovy cover by my friend Vince Packard, a.k.a. Vince Rancid. The mirrored cover, so you can probably see the, the laptop in the cover because it's mirrored. Pretty cool. Anyway, you can see uh, that as a separate video, or I'll put uh, more of the video at the end of this video. So, uh, yesterday, not yesterday, a couple days ago, I did a video about memory and some of the technical aspects of the Buddhist idea of memory, or Buddhist ideas about memory. And I got an interesting comment in which the commenter referenced something from this book, The Grand, De the Grand Delusion by Steve Hagen. And I think this is a real good book. Uh, highly recommend it for uh, if you want a, a nice, easy to read book about some of the more interesting aspects of, of uh, Buddhist uh, philosophy and stuff. Nice book. And all of Stephen Hag Steve Hagen's books are good, or at least the ones I've read. I don't think I've read every book that uh, Steve has written, but uh, the ones I've read have all been really good. And I'll read you the passage that my commenter referenced, and then I'll make some of my own comments about it. So the passage comes from chapter 14, The Persistent Illusion of Persistence. And I'm uh, skipping a little bit at the beginning. They're basically talking about change and how change, everything changes. Or more, more precisely than that, what Steve Hagen is trying to convey is that change is everything. It's not that there are things that change, but that change is actually more fundamental than things. There aren't things that change, that change is the fundamental thing that's happening. So let's see if we can get into that. But he does talk about memory. So, oops, I don't want my record to blow away. It's kind of windy out today. It's a, kind of written in the form of a dialogue with, uh, with a character called Anyone. So Anyone says, well, I can certainly name some things that persist and change. And Steve Hagen says, like what? Anyone says, like me, for example. I was once a child, but now I'm grown. I've changed. In fact, I'm changing right now. I'm changing in every moment. You pointed that out yourself, yet I'm still me. And Steve Hagen replies, but in what sense does the word me, in quotes, or you, or I, refer to that child? If me refers to the body, all the atoms of that child's body have long ago dispersed into the environment. If me refers to the mind, then every thought, feeling, or mental impression experienced by that child has long ago vanished. Then anyone replies, Yeah, but I have memories, photos, and even videos and recordings of me as a child. I can even remember when many of them were made. I was there. And then Steve Hagen replies, Sure, you have memories and photos of that child, but the child no longer persists, nor did it ever, it in quotes. There's just the immediate me, the you right now, who is obviously not the same as the vanished child. Anyone counters, But I have the actual memories of that child. They persist. And Steve Hagen replies, the memories you speak of are not frozen in the past. They're now. You remember them now. Furthermore, whatever memories you experience now are not playbacks of mental videos of then, in quotes. Anyone who has studied human memory can tell you this. You're creating them now, not retrieving them fully formed from some neurological archive. Nor will your memories remain as they are now. Memories continually mutate. In fact, every time you recall, in quotes, a memory, you alter it. In any case, the past simply isn't here, nor is the future. There is only now, memories included. And this leads us to a footnote, footnote number 59, which was pretty good, so I'm going to read you that. 
footnote 59 is on page 283, in case you're looking this up at home. Uh, it goes, in fact, the past, like the future, isn't uniquely determined either, as we shall see. To give a quick example, in his book The Grand Design, Stephen Hawking writes, Quantum physics tells us that no matter how thorough our observation of the present, the unobserved past, like the future, is indefinite and exists only as a spectrum of possibilities. The universe, according to quantum physics, has no single past or history. And uh, there gives a reference to what page you can find that on. And the rest of the chapter is pretty fascinating, but I'm going to leave it there because what I want to talk about is memory. And I responded to uh, the person who made the comment with some comments of my own about m my own kind of coming to terms with this in a, in a sort of um, an incident that happened when I was in Japan. And I'd been working with uh, the Zen thing for a while by the time this particular thing happened to me. And I, I was... Uh, I was living in Japan and I was working on putting together a movie that eventually, it took a long time to put this movie together, it took years and years, but the, the movie eventually came together and, and was called Cleveland Screaming and it's up on YouTube, I think it's still up on YouTube, I put it up on YouTube in 2020 and I don't think I took it down. I'm not sure if I took it down, but if you want to get it on DVD, you can get it from Red Hour Records if you're if you're interested. But it is a movie about the Cleveland and Akron hardcore punk scene. But I was mo working on this movie for ages and ages and gathering material and trying to find stuff uh, about the the Cleveland and Akron a punk scene of the of the early '80s, and. As part of this process, I was trying to find any any records at all, not, not just records as in the term of uh, LP recordings, but any records of, of any kind of videos, uh, tape recordings, uh, photos, films, anything. And what I came across was a bunch of videotapes shot on a professional quality Betacam SP uh, videos uh, done by this woman in Michigan who had come down to Akron and taped uh, three complete shows by a bunch of our hardcore bands in the scene. Now here's the weird part to me is I, I must have started making this in the early 2000s, maybe even in, even into the late 90s, I'm not sure, but at least in the early 2000s. So this is 20 years after the events that uh, I was trying to document. I had no memory of anyone having ever videotaped any shows by Zero Defects, the band I was in, and, um, uh, and any of the other bands that we were Part of, that were part of the, Ziggy's barking. There's a tarp that uh, somehow blew into our yard when it was windy the uh, the other day, and now he's barking at the tarp because it's blowing around. Ziggy, it's just a tarp. It's not going to hurt you. Anyway, so, Ziggy, chill, chill. Anyway, so I had no conscious memory of us ever having been videotaped at all. So I, I, I was surprised that there were any videos. So I watched, I watched these videos, and there I am at age 19 or 18 on the screen, and, uh, and I'm doing all kinds of things, including looking right at the camera. So obviously at the time these videos were made, I knew I was being taped, but 20 years later I had no memory at all of ever having been videotaped. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, if, if you would have asked me before these videotapes turned up, I would have said, that, no, we never, there were never any shows of Zero Defects, never got on video. So that was really incredible. And I found myself constructing memories of those shows based on what I saw on the tapes. So 
I, I, because I'd been doing the Zen practice, I'd actually started seeing how memory was constructed in real time by doing the Zen process. It's, it's when you're sitting around staring at walls, especially on a retreat, when you're just doing nothing but doing that all day long for days and days and days at a time. You, you got some time on your hands and you start to see how things are working in, in your head, in your, in your brain. So I'd started to see this and I started to see myself constructing memories based on what I saw in these videos. The other thing that had come up was that Jimmy, our uh, the singer of Zero Defects, we'd done some interviews for little uh, zines and things, uh, little um, punk uh, fanzines and stuff, and Jimmy had saved those and, had, and digitized them and put them on CDs and sent them to me. So I listened to some of these, and there I am at 19 years old talking on tape and saying things and, and, and I'm going, whoa, and it was, it was a very weird experience to hear this stuff back because I found my, I heard myself on tape saying things from 20 years earlier and, and espousing attitudes that I thought I had only come by recently, but I, but I found out that I was saying things like that 20 years before. I, I can't think of anything specific, but I was going, wow, I, I didn't know I thought that way 20 years ago. Very weird stuff. Um, but I, I found that that my memories of the, the time that I spent in the punk scene all those years ago were now being overwritten, as it were, by what I saw on the videos. So now I don't know how much of what I remember about those days and those shows that we played are actual memories of what we did and how much of it is just things I saw on videotape and then constructed the way I would construct a memory or, or construct a story about somebody else. You know, if I saw a video of, um, I don't know, Henry Rollins uh, playing a show with Black Flag and then imagined what the show must have been like for Black Flag to play, you know, I could, I could imagine how he felt at that show. Well, you know, I, I, if I see a picture of me or a video of me, I could imagine how I felt at that show the same way. You know, and it, it, it might have a little bit more validity, you know, because I can, you know, I have some vague memories of it, but not that much more. So we make a lot of this stuff up, and I could see how that happened in real time. I got that, you know, I had the advantage of being able to see myself do that and having the Zen practice to work on, and I can confirm that what Steve Hagen says and what these memory experts have, have studied about it is true. So doing this work with it, I've become a lot less convinced by my own memory. I I don't believe my own memory necessarily. I, I I don't. It's not that I don't trust it, but I don't I don't believe it. Just because I remember doing something, I don't necessarily think that means I did it. And just because somebody else has a clear memory of of something happening, I don't necessarily think that means it's true. <laughs> so what memory is? I don't exactly know, but what I don't think it is, is, is not a, a snapshot of the past, a reliable snapshot. This, this is actually kind of ties in with my uh, lingering fascination with UFOs. I remember when I first remember, when I first started uh, studying about UFOs, one of the things that was, that they used as evidence was recovered memory. So uh, Betty and Barney Hill, uh, if you know anything about UFOs, they were the famous UFO abductees who uh, were one of the first abductee cases where they, they had lost, lost time. And they'd encountered a UFO while driving and then had I don't know how many hours of their of their lives that they couldn't remember. So they went into hypnosis years later and they had recovered memories of being on an operating table and these uh, crazy looking aliens with 
big black eyes and big round heads, you know, doing strange things and probing them and all that stuff. You know, one of the classic cases, one of the early classic cases. And for a long time, this was presented as a kind of proof that it really happened because the idea at the time, this was the early 60s, I think, 1961 or 62, the idea at the time was that these recovered memories, that the memory was perfectly stored in your head somewhere, and that hypnosis could bring out the, the perfect memory of, of something happening. Well, further studies have shown that that isn't the case at all, that you can just make up stuff. And so recovered memories learned during hypnosis are, or, or discovered during therapy sessions and things like that, are now usually considered not all that reliable as, as facts. And if you're a Buddhist like me, or if you're, if you're me the Buddhist, I'm starting to wonder whether the past is a fact. <laughs> I mean, this is how weird I've gotten with it. Now, one thing my teacher did say is that everything you do in the present moment is carved into the universe. So if I do something in the present moment, I snap my fingers or I make a video, it's carved into the universe. So this video I'm making, presumably it is action at the present moment. Well, it is action at the present moment. So right now I'm making this and a record of it is preserved. And then you folks who are watching it are watching a preserved record of something that I did in the past, even though I'm doing it right now. Now, I wonder how malleable that all is. I don't know. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know how much of what you're seeing right now is what was actually done in the past. I know a lot of it isn't because I edited this video. Well, I will edit this video. This is tricky, isn't it? What you're seeing right now is edited. I already know this because I made some mistakes and I know I'm going to go in and, and cut those mistakes out. So you're already seeing something that's manipulated version of the past. And also you're not seeing the whole thing that's happening right here. You can't see uh, Ziggy under the table, for example, and you can't see the, the book over here and the record over here, and you can't see the whole table, and there's a whole a lot you're filling in. That's just part of what's being manipulated. So the point is, we don't know the past. We, we, we presume that, there's, that there is a past. Uh, but we don't know. And this also makes me doubtful about time travel. If you want to get freaky with me, let's talk about time travel sometime. I don't know if time travel is possible. I love science fiction stories about time travel. But if you want to, if you want to know what I think about whether you could actually build a machine like they do in, the, in uh, you know, Doctor Who or some of these other places and then actually go to the past, I kind of doubt it. I, I don't think it's there. I don't think it's actually there to go to. But anyway, that's a story for another time. I just thought I'd give you some of my weird speculations about uh, time and memory uh, inspired by uh, this book, The Grand Delusion, and the comment that the guy made about that. So there you go. That's it. That's what you have. And I'll give you some more of my song, uh, Naked Truth. It was actually written uh, in response or in inspiration, inspired by having read a uh, biography about Krishnamurti, Jiddu Krishnamurti. And I'm not really sure. Uh, I re-recorded the song for the video. And even having re-recorded it and relearned the, the uh, lyrics, I'm not exactly sure how the lyrics relate to the biography of Krishnamurti, but I remember that they do <laughs> relate to the biography of Krishnamurti. So I'll let you figure out how, how exactly they relate to it. But I, I do remember that that's what the song is about. So there you go. Anyway. If you want to donate to me, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually only ways of making a living, so I thank you for your support. But as always, this is offered for free, so you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Hey Ziggy, do you remember your past?
Just don't come that way 